switches, uh, it's always one of the critical components of an in rail infrastructure. You need them, but they may fail from time to time. You need to maintain them. Uh, so it seems that you have uh, found a revolutionary way uh, to do the maintenance. Can you please explain? It's especially interesting because you're living in the north of Europe where the conditions are probably even more tough than in Central Europe where the sun is shining every day or, or rain is coming well. but <laughs> yeah, It's uh, very challenging to um, maintain and inspect the turnouts. And one of the main uh, challenges forward for the railway industry is that we have to increase our capacity for both uh, uh, people and uh, goods. And in that sense we have to do inspections and maintenance without uh, needing to stop the trains. And that means that we will uh, have to use uh, robots to do uh, simpler maintenance and inspection because the safety is not the same for robots <coughs> as it is for humans. Robots, but uh, this sounds rather, uh, well, uh, difficult. Uh, I never saw any robot who would know how to do this job. How, how are you uh, teaching your machines? And can you uh, describe a little bit more uh, exactly what kind of machines uh, you are using? Our solution is to uh, use drones, use the air, because drones have the ability to move outside the, the track if a train uh, comes. And that is the whole point. And as well, drones can uh, inspect uh, the railway while the trains are running above the catenary and above the turbulence zone. And that means that drones could be a very helpful robot for, for the railway industry. And also, uh, drones can fly on predefined routes, so you don't have to uh, fly them by a, by a human, you can actually pro program them. Uh, how they should fly and where they should fly and when they should fly and what kind of images that you capture and what kind of thermographical image they should capture. And that is something we want to take advantage of well. because today many operators use helicopters and that is very uh, costly. And also the drone industry is getting more and more mature, meaning that they can carry heavier load and that means that we can start to do simpler maintenance like lubrication of switches with drones because they have the capacity to to carry that uh, payload. Uh, how do I have to understand this? I mean, I understand that they, they, they might uh, supervise uh, with cameras and then uh, you have an algorithm who uh, understands that this looks a little query or so, or you have persons who are checking these uh, uh, well, uh, footings from coming from the air, but but a drone while it's flying, uh, can it uh, lubricate as well? I can't disclose all those details of how we're going to solve it because we have um, filed in the, a patent. So the actual how we're going to solve it is not something I can tell about. But what I can tell is that it will be a drone that uh, can lubricate lubricates switches uh, very precisely and in quite high speed with uh, low energy usage. While being in the air? And we have been doing uh, uh, tests uh, before with, with pilots and without pilots and uh, the product itself will be designed so it operates without pilots because we really have to have full control of what the robot does and safety. So it will be designed to be used without drone pilots and to be used that um, the infrastructure owner don't have to be a drone operator. That's our design goals. So, so what, what do you estimate when uh, you would be able to give some further information within a year's time or so? Yeah, within a year's time we will have more information and once the, the, um, the patent um, uh, process is done we will of course share and we will also 
commercialize this robot, which means that uh, other infrastructure owners can buy this robot and use it in their uh, infrastructure to, uh, to save money and uh, increase capacity. Uh, do you also have some ideas on uh, what to do in winter? Uh, uh, in Germany we uh, several times had the situation that though there are heated switches, as our colleague from Deutsche Bahn Netz pointed out today on this conference, half of the uh, amounts of switches are heated in Germany, but when it comes to the real critical situation that it, it is uh, uh, below zero temperature and snow and whatever may happen in this time, then it does not always help. So, so uh, we, we don't hear from, from Norway, for example, that trains are constantly stopping because in winter the switches are, are not working. So obviously you have a better idea on this. Do, do you think you can also do uh, something in this area or, or do you have any idea how, yeah. how they do it in, in, in Barnenau in this respect? Well, uh, in the, the way of the robots, is uh, a large part of it is that it's going to thermographically inspect switches. And that means that you actually can see how hot uh, the rails are and also uh, if, the, if there's part of the rail that is not heated because the instrumentation of the, um, of the switch point heating system might have some issues that uh, the current uh, fixed sensor can't, um, can't uh, interpret. But by having a thermographical image we have a lot better control over how it's actually performing. And network rail already uses helicopter for for thermographical inspection of switches. So that's a that's a large part of what the robot should do in the winter. As well, it can also uh, fly over the over the um, overhead line and over the turbulence zone and actually take pictures to look at if switches are full of snow or not. And it can help uh, the maintainers to be there to have a. Uh, the, that uh, the train stop is shorter than, uh, it's as short as possible. So you don't need sensors and uh, long kilometers of cables or whatsoever to bring the signal to any place, uh, as we heard today, that well, all kind of sensors also might fail from time to time. So, yeah. so you have the, f the first insight uh, directly, yeah. without some equipment in between. Yeah, that's one of the advantages with uh, a mobile sensor and maybe one of the most versatile mobile sensors today is actually a, a drone because it could uh, it could operate in all three dimensions yeah. and it when you're first uh, having a drone out on work you have you can uh, instrument it with a lot of different sensors that will really um, help you get the most valuable data because uh, often things you have to get a clear image of what is uh, going on as well as uh, not only the information from the fixed sensor so we believe that um, uh, sensors from train will be very important and more and more important but uh, the um, if a, if a failure suddenly occurs, we can't just uh, run a tra uh, train to that place. But uh, uh, a drone it acts like a bird. You can actually be there very like a first responder. So I believe that there will be a, a good place for both measurement trains and yeah. smaller robotics because they yeah. they solve different part of the equation. Yeah, this, exactly. This is what, what Deutsche Bahn explains when it comes to winter crisis. Uh, we have to bring our people to the place and they are living somewhere far away and we don't have now as former times many workers at every place just waiting for the eventuality they should do something. So then they explain it has to take time because we cannot go there. So then then usually the, the crack is in the middle of a big center of uh, many switches. So how yeah. to go there? You yeah. cannot walk around. So, so many of problems. And you, you say you come from there. But, but what in case there would be uh, the, the electric wires uh, of, of, of electric lines, then this might be a problem still for if, if it's a larger drone, of course, to, 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 to 
way to go in between to to come nearer. But, but you you have thought about this situation. Yeah. Yeah. When Norway, you don't have all the times electricity. There's no use for this. But but if, if it would be, yeah, it is. Uh, as uh, sensors today have quite ho high quality, so for most of the inspection, you can be above the overhead line because Even. the camera optic is so good, and you can be uh, above the yeah. turbulence zone. And for the for the intervention, when you have to go underneath uh, the overhead line, there's a gap uh, between uh, from it's a five meter air gap there where you have very good place to fly a drone. And even still, the, um, in the beginning, we will uh, do this while we have um, a night closure where we normally do maintenance because we will. It's only testing and testing and uh, by third parties that we will be using this in between trains. But since the, uh, the robot is working so fast and we can have the people doing more advanced tasks, it will still be beneficial for uh, railway operators to use it. So, so uh, a lot of the tasks you can do uh, without being between the, the track and the overhead line. But for the lubrication, obviously, you are uh, underneath it. But uh, it's, if you look at railways, uh, it's, a, it's that place between there is a large volume of air which you can move. That is something we um, uh, intend to, to use. And, but safety is the number one for all this project and uh, there's a lot of relevant standards in railway like um, Senelec 50, 126, part 1 and 2 that uh, we're, uh, it will be designed against. And then we have a very good partner on the <laughs> aviation part, Nordic and MAN, which has a, a very uh, good experience with uh, aviation rules and stuff that sorts the, the aviation part. So it's, uh, it's all about safety. So you should try to discuss with Deutsche Bahn as well. So far, as far as I see, they mainly use drones for uh, searching eventual graffiti uh, artists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, or, or somebody who tries to steal some some copper wires, but this would be a much more sophisticated uh, idea, probably. Yeah, it's more into the core business, yeah. and the industry is helping us out there because uh, computational power is getting cheaper and smaller, <coughs> the weighs less, and the, the drone industry is getting more and more mature. And uh, robots is used quite heavily in uh, in other parts, in other industries, and in railway we have a lot of robots, but they are really large trains that do impressive stuff. But the smaller robots that could do simpler tasks are not currently available so much. But we see a trend amongst uh, other vendors that they are um, moving towards it. But we believe that uh, the airborne part of it plays a key role in. Um, in railway because you don't share the same uh, dynamic space as the train you can actually be on a, in another volume and as far as i understand this you might also use these drones in in the winter situation if there is a frozen switch instead of lubricating it with the standard grease you might take some other uh, fluid uh, material that helps to 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 defreeze for example might be possible of course it could uh, the tank could be filled with the deicer something, something else eh? absolutely and as well it's it's all about it has a natural place in the in the area of software because software can tell you there is something wrong with this switch it's probably uh, snow but if you want to be make sure that you send out the people to the correct job a picture of uh, that corresponds with that uh, yeah. sensor data is giving it so much more validity yeah. and uh, in order to get a picture really fast and really cheap, uh, a drone is, uh, is the obvious choice. So there should be one drone at every main station, probably. I think it will be the largest station will uh, probably have, have, a, it, a, have a drone yeah. container yeah. that has an automated uh, drone ready yeah. for ready both for uh, for checking if stops uh, happens and also if you have. Uh, generic inspections or generic uh, lubrication. Uh -huh. 
Well, it, it sounds uh, very interesting. I um, uh, hope that you will succeed in going on with this and that we come back to you getting some further information once it will be ready yeah. for the public presentation. We, we are really looking forward to reveal this uh, robot. <laughs> so it's okay. uh, going to be a very exciting okay. times. Yeah, thanks and a lot. Thanks. <laughs> okay.